Range Rover is arguably the best car on the planet. However, there's a new kid on the block that's all set to steal its thunder. Luckily for Land Rover, that car isn't made by a rival manufacturer. That car is the Range Rover's little brother, the Range Rover Sport. Land Rover's engineers claim this is the ultimate luxury SUV. They say it's the fastest, most agile, and most responsive Land Rover ever. That it can go anywhere, do anything. And it's around 20,000 pounds cheaper than its big brother. They talk about it as if it's some kind of messiah on wheels. But it's difficult to believe the hype. Surely, there must be something wrong with it. One thing that could easily be wrong with the new Range Rover Sport is that it could lack comfort in comparison to the standard car. And to be fair, it doesn't glide around in quite as luxurious a manner. The suspension architecture is pretty much all new, and you can really feel it. It is a lot more jiggly than the full-fat Range Rover. Also, the seats are different. Land Rover has changed the density of the foam in the seats to give them a firmer, more sporting feel. And the overall effect is that it feels a little harder than the standard car. There are other potential drawbacks. There's less rear leg room than in the standard range, less boot space, and although the Sport has a third row of seats, they're unbelievably small, and even fitting kids inside is tantamount to child abuse. But these are all minor gripes. The car offers more space than most people would need, more equipment than you'd know what to do with, and above all else, it's fabulously well put together. This is still a big, luxurious car. You've got a 23-speaker Meridian audio system with speakers in the ceiling. You've got a central storage binnacle that's big enough for a bottle of champagne, a rear seat entertainment system. This is just absolute luxury. Being in this car is a bit like being in business class on a Boeing 747. In fact, if I was to travel on a plane, I probably wouldn't want to get out of the Range Rover Sport. I just want to drive it straight onto the plane and up into business class. In fact, I think that's exactly what I'll do. This isn't your ordinary uh, day at the office, I've got to say. I'm now driving up a ramp into the back of a Boeing 747. I've got to say, this is one of the strangest things I've ever done. I think right now I'm in economy class, and uh, as we go through the cabin, I can see the two overwing exits. But I won't be needing them anytime soon. You got any uh, sandwiches? <laughs> I'll have a gin and tonic. The next logical assumption to make is that the Range Rover Sport is great for performance, but rubbish at everything else the full fat Range Rover is good at, i.e. off-roading, right? Well, wrong. Let's not forget this car uses the exact same platform as a standard Range Rover, and it's built to last. It is tough as nails. <laughs> the car is a little bit firmer on road, so the ride's a bit jigglier, and naturally you would expect that to be the case off-road as well. You expect it to kind of shake your bones, but really, I'm cruising around this off-road track in relative comfort. I feel like I'm in an armchair, even though I've got at my disposal over 500 horsepower. So we've seen then that there's definitely no problem where performance is concerned, certainly not off-road. 
And when it comes to cruising around on tarmac, Land Rover give you plenty of choice. There are a range of engines to choose from, the slowest of which is quick enough to keep up with hot hatchbacks, and the fastest, well that's quick enough to scare supercars. There are two 3 litre diesels, one 4.4 litre diesel, and two supercharged petrols. One's a 3 litre supercharged, and the other one, well that doesn't really need any introduction, mostly because it does a damn good of introducing itself. It's Jaguar's amazing 5 litre supercharged engine, the same one they use in the Jaguar XKRS and in the top of the range F-Type. We're talking 0 to 60 in 5 seconds flat, 500 horsepower, 625 newton meters of torque, and a top speed of 155 miles per hour. But those numbers don't really tell the story. I mean, the best way to tell that story is just to accelerate. Watch this. You literally get thrown back in your seat every single time. There's power on tap. It is absolutely savage. Now, one of the best ways to test whether this new Range Rover Sport is better than the previous model is to do a naught to 100, back to naught run. The previous car did it in 19 seconds-ish. Let's see if this can improve it. So, transmission into sport. Terrain response into dynamic. Left foot on the brake. Bit of revs. Three, two, one, go. All right. Chris, my instructor, has the stopwatch. So we're doing 60 miles an hour. 80, 90, get ready, 100, break, 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 break. Hard on the anchors. Break, 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 break. Woo! <laughs> wow. That is savage. What's the time? 16.63. 16, so three seconds quicker than the previous car. I felt good. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. Um, I braked when I got to 100, but right now I think it's time to do a VMAX run, top speed, and see exactly how fast this thing can go. I'm in the supercharged V8 right now, and uh, they claim 155 miles an hour top speed. I don't know if this runway is quite long enough to get us there, but I'm gonna give it a bloody good go. Uh, three, two, one, go. 30 miles an hour. 60, that's in five seconds dead. We're up to 70 already. We're breaking the law officially right now. <laughs> that's 100 miles an hour. 110, 115, 120, and it's so smooth as well. It's unbelievable, 130 miles an hour. 135, 140. I feel like I'm in my arms here. I expected to feel a little bit more excited, but that was, even though that was thrilling, you know, this car just copes with top speed runs like nothing. Incredible. I can't recommend the new Range Rover Sport highly enough. It lives up to Land Rover's hype and then some. It's certainly less practical than the full Range Rover, with a firmer ride and slightly less cabin and storage space. But these are all minor gripes, particularly when one takes into account its immense capabilities both on and off-road. It's lightning fast, it can negotiate bends like a car half its size and can, with no modifications whatsoever, conquer inaccessible, inhospitable terrain without the merest hint of a struggle. It's a remarkable car, make no mistake. Is it the best SUV in the world? Well, that's a tough question with a simple answer, absolutely.